Hello, Dave here from the Resurrection Center. God bless you all. Here's a quick teaching moment. People have asked me about what is an offering? What is a tithe? And they also want to know is how an offering to a church is related to tithes. People are asking me because they want to do the right thing as it relates to sound doctrine and the biblical principles that apply to that sound doctrine. Well, that's a good reason. Those people that have asked me know that tithing and offerings are clearly in the Bible, but they're not sure about it and they want to know more. First of all, tithes and offerings are not the same. Tithes and offerings are different. Let's talk about giving your best and being your best. The offering beyond tithing, see it's different, the offering beyond tithing shows a character, your personal character, defined in your heart. You see, that is what God sees. This is not the same as a tithe, which represents 10%. Yes, it's a numerical value. 10% of gross income referred to as your financial harvest. That alone is a biblical principle to be followed through obedience. I'll tell you more. In the Old Testament, Jews brought 10% of their harvest to a storehouse as a welfare plan for the needy or in case of famine. The tithe is specifically mentioned in the books of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I'm going to say that again. The tithe is specifically mentioned in the books of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The first tithe is giving one-tenth, that's 10%, of agricultural produce. It is mentioned in the New Testament too. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, and also Luke chapter 11, verse 42, Jesus referred to tithing as something that should not be neglected. That is a biblical principle to be followed from true sound doctrine clearly written in the Bible. Today, I'm putting focus on and I'm talking about the offering, which is a presentation to the Lord beyond tithing. An offering is not a replacement for tithing. Tithing is the principle and an addition, additional offering that comes from a cheerful heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, I'll say it again. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, the Apostle Paul said, God loves a cheerful giver. While encouraging the believers in Corinth to give generously, the Apostle Paul didn't want them to give beyond their means or reluctantly or under a feeling of compulsion. Most importantly, he wanted them to rely on their inner convictions. The main idea of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, is that our giving ought to be voluntary and spring from a cheerful attitude. It should come from the heart. The Apostle Paul is speaking about financial giving, but voluntary and cheerful giving goes beyond the scope of monetary giving. Serving our brothers and sisters is another form of giving. Let me bring you to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 1. Chapter 17, verse 1 of Deuteronomy says, You must not sacrifice to the Lord your God an ox or sheep with defect or any serious flaw, for that is detestable to the Lord your God. See, God's love moved him to sacrifice that which meant the most to him, his only son, that's Jesus. Our response, if we truly understand God's love for us, and that it's the desire to give back to God, that which means the most to us. The Old Testament reveals that God set forth high the standards for the sacrifice he required of his people. A worthy sacrifice had to cost the people something. As their hearts shifted away from God, the people began struggling to give God costly offerings. See, that's why an offering comes from the heart. And what would happen is they would bring blind, lame, and sick animals, assuming God would not tell the difference. 
You see that in Malachi in chapter 1, verse 8. But God saw what they were doing and declared their offerings to be in vain. And that's in Malachi chapter 1, verse 10. Throughout the Old Testament period, God was setting the stage for the ultimate perfect and sinless sacrifice of his son for the sins of humanity. The offerings we give back to God reveal our heart's condition. A heart that overflows with gratitude for God's love will respond in selfless devotion. If we are unwilling to sacrifice our time, our possessions, our money, our energy, we indicate that we do not love God as he desires. God takes delight in the person who gives him cheerfully out of a loving heart, a person who understands that God is the source of everything he has and who knows that God will more than compensate for whatever is sacrificed to him. And you see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. If you struggle in giving your best offerings to God, Pause and reflect on what God has sacrificed for you. Trust God and give him the best that you have because you love him with all your heart. So now you know the difference between tithing and offering. At another time, I'll talk about first fruits, but that's later. That's something different and it's once per year. If you want to know more, see me at the Resurrection Center and I'll tell you more. My name is Dave, and thank you for joining me.